What do you know about x-rays? We all know they are used to take pictures of your bones or to see the contents of your bag at the airport. But have you ever imagined that a very powerful source of x-rays could also help solve industrial problems and could help speed up your innovation process? Well, yes it can, and the ESRF does it. A wide range of techniques is open to industry at the ESRF. Dr. Tamsin Lafford, Beamine scientist, will give us an insight into X-ray diffraction imaging, also called X-ray topography. The performance of a device, whether that's electronic or optoelectronic or even mechanical, that depends on the structure of the material it's made of and the quality of that structure. And sometimes small defects can cause big problems. Now we have a way of looking at near-perfect crystals non-destructively looking right inside. So that can help anywhere where the performance and therefore the competitivity and the profitability of an industry depend on the quality of that material. So, for example, microelectronics industry depends on high-quality crystal substrates like silicon and gallium arsenide and growing high-quality layers on them. The optoelectronics industry similarly. Uh, photovoltaics, for example, turning sunlight into electricity, the quality of that crystal affects the efficiency of the cell that's formed. Uh, certain optics applications, we need high quality crystals both internally and on the surface. And sometimes small defects have serious consequences on the performance, and these defects might not show up by other means. We're looking at defects such as dislocations, stacking faults, so the crystal's not grown quite right. There's scratches on the surface, inclusions, bits of stuff that shouldn't be there. All these distort the crystal and create a strain field, and it's the strain field that we're looking at that we can see these defects by. Inside, as well as on the surface, and it's all non-destructive. This example is multicrystalline silicon for solar photovoltaic applications. We're seeing a growing consciousness of renewable energy resources. This sample comes from the National Institute for Solar Energy at Chambéry. Now defects in this material affect the efficiency and it can even cause failure. So looking at this structure that helps improve the performance. This is a white beam topograph. We're using all the energies available in the X-ray beam. If you compare, we call white light, but it's actually made up of all the colours of the rainbow. We're in transmission in this case. We're looking right through the sample, right inside, without touching it, without damaging it. So in this case, the beam's about 40 millimetres wide and about 8 millimetres high, but the sample itself was a lot bigger than that. The resolution on the image is about 3 microns in this case. If we choose a different detector, we can get down to submicron. Now, if the sample's completely defect-free, we see a uniformly grey area. But where there are defects, like the dislocations that we can see bunching up, then we get dark and light areas. There's also this disc-shaped twin, so-called, in the middle, where the crystal growth has reversed its order, its direction essentially, and around it there are columns of smaller crystallites they appear elsewhere. If we go to the monochromatic case, we select a single energy, we're more sensitive, we see again the twin, the matrix, the columns around it that are now missing, they're not in this part of the image. Correlating that with electronic data, we can see that this type of defect can cause serious problems with the photovoltaic efficiency. This example is a synthetic diamond. It comes from a collaboration with academic partners and with a company called Element 6 Technologies in South Africa. Now, synthetic diamonds are used for various applications, including detectors and microelectronics. And in this case, this one was destined for specialist optics applications, where we need the bulk and the surface quality to be really good. So this is a white beam topograph of the diamond. That central region is uniformly grey, it's practically defect free. The defects occur near the edges and we can see stacking faults where the order of growth has got confused. There's dislocations running from one side of the crystal to the other. 
there are scratches on the surface, probably from polishing damage, and near the top there's an inclusion, something that shouldn't be there. In this case, a bubble of liquid left over from the growth process. In the monochromatic topograph, we're more sensitive to the defects. So some that we've already seen in white beam show up larger, and there are some that now appear that we didn't see before. We need to get the sample at just the right angle for diffraction and we can rock it through this diffraction condition. And it's on the flanks of this so-called rocking curve that we're the most sensitive to strain. And some defects will show up light on one side of the rocking curve and dark on the other. And this tells us about whether the strain is tensile or compressive. And we can integrate these images into a single image or we can look at them separately and we can also analyse them quantitatively, pixel by pixel, to get, for example, a measure of full width half maximum, which is a measure of crystalline quality locally. One key point is the expertise that's here. As a synchrotron, we've got high flux, so data acquisition is quite quick. There's a wide range of energies in the beam, from a few keV up to a few hundred keV, and we can either use all of them at once or we can select the one that we want. There's a range of fields of view for the images and a range of resolutions, a range of detectors that we can use. We can also mimic real industrial processing conditions. We can get the sample really cold, we could get it really hot, we could put it in a gaseous atmosphere and see how it behaves. Synchrotron radiation has a property called coherence. So if you compare a synchrotron to a dental x-ray kit, it's like comparing a laser to a light bulb, for example. Now this property can enhance some defects and properties that uh, turn up in the other uh, topographs, but it can also make visible some properties that you wouldn't otherwise see. So for example, there's a feature called ferroelectric polling it doesn't change the material density or structure of the material, but it changes the optical density. And so we can image the ferroelectric polling by means of this property of coherence. Another property is the timed structure of the synchrotron beam. If we synchronise the experiment with the timed structure of the beam, we can do like stroboscopic experiments and follow, for example, piezoelectric effects. In white beam topography, we're using all the energies available in the X-ray beam, and we can work in transmission or reflection. Each set of crystal planes selects the energy it needs at the angle that it needs to diffract, and that's represented by these colours in this image. We use a two-dimensional detector, so each diffracted spot is an image of what's going on inside the crystal on that set of atomic planes. And if we compare different spots, we get a more detailed interpretation of what's going on. If the crystal's perfect, the spot is uniform. Defects distort the crystal and create a strain field, and it's the effect of those strain fields that we're seeing. With monochromatic beam topography, we select a single energy to work at. We have to set the sample at just the right angle to diffract, and we're more sensitive to the strain field in this case. We can get a more detailed interpretation. We can rock the sample through the diffraction condition and either integrate to have a single image or take multiple images. Those multiple images we can look at separately or we can analyse them together pixel by pixel to get local quantitative information. If you're interested to know more or to find out how the ESRF can help your business, please contact Dr Edward Mitchell, our Business Development Manager, or visit our website. Yeah.